Google I.O. is coming up. Let's talk about what to expect. Google's Big Developers Conference runs from May 11th through the 12th. The company put out a schedule recently. On day one, we'll get a keynote, and we'll see what's new in Android 13, Augmented Reality, Chrome OS, Google Home, and Google Pay. Day two is a bit nerdier with sessions on how to build apps for Wear OS, deploying custom machine learning models to mobile, designing apps for large screens, and how to add voice assistant to apps. So that's the official lineup, but it's a little vague, right? Let's dig through some reports to get a better idea of what we could see. We'll start with the Pixel Watch, which could show up at I.O. This is the part of the video where I say the following is unofficial. Google has not confirmed the existence of the Pixel Watch, well, other than a trademark application, but we'll get to that later. Way back in April 2021, John Prosser over at Front Page Tech had renders of what he said was the Pixel Watch with the code name Rohan. Here's what it looked like, a black round watch. Prosser said that the renders were based on images he received. Back then, he had heard that the Pixel Watch could come out in October of 2021, or it could be pushed. Fast forward to April 2022, and Evan Blass published a post entitled, This is Rohan, Google's Pixel Watch. Evan Blass is one of the most reliable sources when it comes to leaks, so take that for what it's worth. The image is a render of a simple looking watch. It's round, it features the date, the time, steps, a Fitbit logo, and heart rate on the face of the watch. To the right is what looks like a rotating crown. The device will be running Wear OS 3.1. The image looks a lot like the video published by Front Page Tech. If you want more proof on an upcoming Google Pixel Watch, Google redesigned its store page. On the top navigation is a section for watches. Clicking through, you can see the URL still shows that the category is called Fitbit for the time being. The page itself still displays the text, meet Fitbit, now a member of the Google family. And then you can take a look at all the Fitbits. Is Google really gonna call it the Pixel Watch? Well, several reports have noticed that Google applied for a trademark for, drum roll please, Pixel Watch. The trademark application says the quote, Pixel Watch trademark registration is intended to cover the categories of smartwatches, cases adapted for holding smartwatches, wearable computers in the nature of smartwatches, smartwatch straps, smartwatch bands. So Pixel Watch is most likely the name. Things got a little wackier recently. Android Central published images of what looks like the Pixel Watch in real life. These are unverified, so take this with a grain of salt. They look pretty similar to the leaks by Blass and John Prosser. We're looking at a black circular watch face. It's kind of round and curved all over. The bottom of the watch is curved too. The source said that the bottom looks metallic, but feels like it's coated with glass. The same source published an image of the Pixel Watch next to a 40 millimeter Apple Watch and a 46 millimeter Galaxy Watch. What happens when you try to boot up the device? The source said you would get a boot logo, but then nothing else happens past that. The source also put up an AMA on Reddit where he gave more details about the device. They say that the device is 40 millimeters in diameter, has a thickness of 14 millimeters, and the visible screen without the bezel is 30 millimeters. The device weighs 36 grams or around 1.2 ounces. There's another shot of the watch and you can kind of make out where the bezels would be. There looks to be a speaker on the watch as well. The guess is that long slit is for a speaker. The source says the build quality is quote, very premium, Apple level quality. I suspect pricing will reflect that. They are aiming for the Apple watch with this one in my opinion, end quote. The device had no charger found with it. Trying out wireless Qi chargers did not work. They also said that the Pixel Watch's band was a bit difficult to attach at first, but was extremely secure. Once the watch was on, the source says that it was the most comfortable watch they've ever worn. They said that compared to their Galaxy Watch, this feels like it's not even there, and that the crown does not poke into the back of their hand when bending their wrist back or typing. What could this Pixel Watch cost? We've got this tweet from Yogesh Brar, and he says it will be priced between $300 and $400 with a limited release. How does that compare to the competition? The Galaxy Watch 4 starts at around 250 bucks. The Galaxy Watch 4 Classic starts at $350. Prices go up when you make the screen bigger or whether you add LTE. If you look at that watch that doesn't work with Android phones, the Series 3 starts at $200, the SE starts at $279, and the Series 7 starts at around $400. So it seems like Google would price its Pixel Watch close to the big guns. Brar's tweet also mentioned Google is partnering with Samsung for this and the hardware will have the same sensors as the Galaxy Watch. 
That makes me wonder if it's so similar to the Galaxy Watch, what's the exact purpose of the Pixel Watch? Whatever it is, I hope it's good. Now, do I expect the Pixel Watch is coming at I.O.? It's possible. Google has introduced hardware at I.O. in the past, including the Pixel 3a, the Nest Hub Max, and the original Google Home speaker. I.O. is a developer's conference, so talking about software is usually the focus. Also, Google regularly holds an October event for its phones, so it could show the watch then, since it would be an accessory for the Pixel, like the Pixel Buds. That being said, maybe Google would want to show off its own watch, so developers are motivated to make or update apps for Wear OS. There are also developer sessions for Wear OS on day two. So I'm 50-50 on this. Let me know what you think about a potential Pixel watch at I.O. and if you're interested. What else will we see at I.O.? I'm glad I asked, me. We should be also seeing more key features of Android 13. We saw a developer's preview in March. This part's official, so that's good. That preview featured improvements so it would be easier for Android devices to connect to nearby devices without needing location permissions. That would mean your phone could find devices easier while keeping your data more secure. The developer's preview also showed off the option to theme app icons in supported Android launchers. It's basically the Material U design from Android 12 turned up a little bit. Material U let you customize the colors of Android based on your wallpaper. There was also a quick settings API that would make it easier for apps to add shortcuts to your quick settings area. That's the thing you see when you swipe down from the top of an Android phone. The beta is out now and added more granular permissions for media file access. In the past, if an app wanted access to your music files, it would actually gain access to all of your files. With this new feature, the app can ask for specific types of files. There's also a new anticipatory audio routing feature. Here's how Google describes it. The new API allows you to retrieve a list of devices that may be used to play the specified audio. If I understand this right, this should mean that when you're opening up an app, the app will be able to guess where the audio should play. You know, maybe the app should play in your headphones, maybe the phone speaker, or maybe even your earpiece speaker. We may also see information on getting Android games running on Windows PCs. Google did confirm it is working on a way to do this, but hasn't mentioned that we would see this at I.O. That being said, I.O. seems like a good place for this to pop up. XDA developers noticed a tweet by Magna Paulo Ursus that Google added an Android Desktop System Images repository to the SDK Updates Sites list in Android Studio. Android Studio is what developers use to create Android apps. The links in the repository don't go anywhere yet. Maybe Google is waiting on I.O. to get all this going. And then there's the Pixel 6a. Way back on March 31st, images of what looks like the Pixel 6a packaging may have leaked. Take a look at this picture released by TechZine. If it's real, the 6a would look a lot like the Google Pixel 6 with its camera belt. There appears to be two cameras on that belt. John Prosser of Front Page Tech tweeted this out. Google will officially be announcing the Pixel 6a during Google I.O. with a launch in July. The last time Google announced an A-series phone at I.O. was back in May of 2019. That was the first Pixel A phone, the 3A. The 4A was announced in September of 2020. The 5A in August of 2021. So there's no set pattern when it comes to the A. So those are the major things to look for at Google I.O. 2022. We'll have live coverage of the event right here. So click all the things. There's like a thumb, there's a bell, and the other stuff. Let me know what you want from Google at I.O. in the comments. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and we'll see you online.